Welcome back to AP World History. Today we will be discussing the dynasties of China in the post-classical era, most notably the Tzu, Tong, and Song dynasties. We'll start first with the Tzu about 581 CE. Now, roughly a 300-year period took place from the fall of the Han dynasty, where China was not entirely united under one Han uh, ruler or set of rulers. Uh, the Tzu dynasty, in conquering the five barbarians and other nomads of China, would officially return the, the Chinese state under the control, uh, unified control, of the Han Chinese. While they did not last that long, only about 40 years or so before the Tang took over, they were influential in not only uniting China once again under one Han centralized state system, but also they started a large infrastructure project known as the Grand Canal, connecting north to central China. And that's going to greatly enhance the economic um, flow of goods in China coming in from other parts of the region uh, of the world coming to their southern and central ports and, and spreading to the north, uh, and that would of course also enhance transportation. Now the Tang Dynasty that would take over in 618 CE, as well as the following Song Dynasty, would be known as the Golden Age of China, or the Golden Age of Dynastic or Imperial China. This is where China would reach its cultural, militaristic, and economic height, uh, at least relative to the rest of the world. Uh, the Tang Dynasty would expand substantially, uh, taking the original territory from the Tzu, expanding westward uh, to Central Asia, being stopped only by the Arab Caliphates, uh, to the south, entering what is uh, known now as the regions of Vietnam, or what was the Chomp Empire, uh, as well as expanding somewhat to the north. Along with their military success, the Tang Dynasty would grow substantially in terms of population, as the addition of a new strain of rice from the Champa region, known as Champa rice, uh, had a cultivation time that was about half of the rice that they were using previously, as was it drought resistant. That allowed a lot more rice to be created a lot more quickly, and as a result, grew the population somewhat wildly in the Tang Dynasty. That coupled with the stabilized central government uh, and affluent economy are going to lead to a substantial population growth in the post-classical era. Domestically, the Tang would experience the arrival of Buddhism and the spread of Mahayana Buddhism into uh, throughout Imperial China, but what would be more prominent in China would be the return of Confucian values and a movement led mostly by Han Yu and his writings towards the end of the Tang Dynasty, mid to late part of the Tang Dynasty, uh, known as Neo-Confucianism, or a refocusing on that common Confucian culture uh, that centered around, of course, the patriarchal uh, family uh, set up as well as uh, education, social harmony, uh, and that, that central state control. Confucianism would of course also spread to other regions of East Asia at this time, including Korea, as well as arriving in Japan, thanks to the efforts of the Japanese and the Taika reforms, at which they uh, procured a lot of information about China and took it back to be administered in Japan as well. The Tang would also benefit from innovations such as paper money and wood block print, and those ideas would also spread from China to East Asia and the greater world through trade routes such as the Silk Road and Indian Ocean Trade Network, reaching all the way into even Europe later on. Perhaps what the Tang and following Song dynasties are most well known for, though, is their establishing of the tribute system, which is a system of protectorate states around China, such as Japan, areas in the Philippines, Taiwan, Korea, uh, the Champa region. They would essentially pay or pay tribute to China uh, to essentially protect them. And this was, again, known as a protectorate. Uh, in addition to this, anyone that was willing to desiring to engage in trade with the Tang and Song dynasties as affluent as they were, they had to offer up a gift, uh, a gift to show their submission to China uh, in that China already had everything it needed and that it was sort of blessing them with the opportunity to trade. Uh, and if the gift was accepted, the Chinese would offer a counter gift known as a bestowal uh, that was often much more grandiose than the actual gift offered them. There is one notable, well, two notable exceptions to this rule, however. The Zhongnu Confederacy and the Mongols, uh, two different groups at different times of nomadic invaders to the north, were actually seen as equals uh, to the uh, Chinese over the years, and they were not necessarily treated with that same sort of tribute approach. Regardless, China under the Tang and following Song dynasties had a very condescending view of the rest of the world. Uh, uh, known as um, seeing themselves as the middle kingdom, the center of the world, at least the cultural center of the world, one at which all other inferior civilizations could look up to and hope to one day be as affluent, successful, uh, and prominent as the middle kingdom of China. On a more negative note, however,
However, China would, uh, under the Tang Dynasty, become increasingly irritated with the spread of Mahayana Buddhism, as Buddhism was somewhat counterintuitive to the very strict patriarchal uh, structure and rituals of Confucianism that maintained social harmony. So as a result, uh, Emperor Wuzong in the 9th century would eventually issue a series of decrees known as the Edicts on Buddhism that essentially banned Mahayana Buddhism within China. And not only did it ban it, but the Japanese imperial government, sorry, the Chinese imperial government actively went out uh, to destroy and steal from these and just uh, Buddhist monasteries and these Buddhist monks. Historians also believe, of course, that part of these raids and this destruction of Buddhism was motivated by greed to pay for expansion and military campaigns in the West and the South. But uh, and the, on the exterior, the public announcement was that Buddhism was a, seen as a foreign threat of foreign thought and that it really crippled or could potentially harm the uh, Confucian model and society that was being used by the Tang and following Song Dynasty. In roughly 920 CE, however, the Song Dynasty and family would take over control of China, and they would maintain that Neo-Confucianist approach, uh, as well as maintaining the view of the Middle Kingdom and those tribute states that they had inherited from the Tang. On a more negative note, however, the Song would also be known for one of its more impressive policies, um, a practice known as foot binding, started in the early Song Dynasties. Now, foot binding was when young girls, usually uh, of higher social standing, would be born and very quickly have uh, binding shoes put on them that would not allow their feet to uh, fully extend and grow as normal, but rather would keep them scrunched and petite and what was deemed to be feminine. Now this was of course to show their feminine beauty and their petite nature as well as sort of ensuring that uh, they, they stayed within the home. And that actually became a sign of status, um, as terrible as it was, uh, in that if you were a Chinese member of society and you did not have your feet bound, that meant that you were of lower class because you had to be out in the fields working, etc. And those with bound feet were of higher social standing because their work and labor was not necessary. They could stay uh, at home. Now, while the Song Dynasty would do its best to maintain the power and prestige of the preceding Tang Dynasty, it would, however, succumb to the invasions of the Mongols in the 13th century CE. Uh, beginning with the Yuan Dynasty, which was a Mongol-led dynasty in China, uh, Han rule would end for a brief interim until the Ming uh, would take over again later in the 15th century CE. That concludes this episode of AP World Simplified. Next week, we will be taking a look at the early modern era, starting around 1450 CE, with the European discovery of the Americas and the introduction of the first global economy in the world. And don't forget, if you want access to more videos and resources for students and teachers for AP World, feel free to check out my website at morganapteaching.com. Thanks for watching.